back for another Share Facodium video. Today I'm doing Match Day Mailbag Part 2. Now here I have a confession to make. When I when I do these mailbags on my site or on this channel or wherever else, um, I'm answering real questions that um, that I that I get. I may change the question around a little bit to um, um, you know to obscure details or things like that, but they're always real questions from real readers. Except today, the question I'm going to be answering is actually not a question I've gotten this year, at least not yet. But, um, but let me tell you, I know it's coming. The question is, why does it take so long to get match results? And let me tell you that as soon as the rank order list gets submitted, I'm going to start getting this question in droves. And so I'm going to um, preempt that by having this video ready to drop as soon as the first person asks this question. So by the time that you're watching this video, someone will have asked this question. I promise I will not post this until someone actually asks me this question. The issue is this. Here's the 2023 match calendar. Starting February 1st, applicants can submit their rank order lists, and they got to finish that by March 1st. On March 1st, that site closes. You've got to submit and certify your rank order list, and then nothing happens. Nothing happens till March 13th, almost two weeks later, and that's when you find out whether you matched or didn't match. If you didn't match, you can participate in SOAP. If you did match, you got to wait another few days to find out where you actually matched. So every year after applicants submit their rank order list, they start to wonder, why does it take so long? I mean, what kind of computers does the NRMP have? Are they running the, the match by hand this year or what? Why does it take over two weeks for me to get my match results? And I'm telling you, this is a very common question and I'm about to start getting it. It's such a common question, actually, that the NRMP actually has a whole web page about it. And um, I'll let you read it for yourself. I'll post to it in the show notes. But um, essentially, what's happening after you submit your rank order list is a lot of verification and double checking. Um, because you got to remember, running the match is a is a one shot kind of deal. Um, you know, although many applicants are going to get their top choice in the match, where a lot of other folks end up is a function of where other applicants end up. And so you got to think about what kind of chaos would result if the NRMP accidentally matched a few applicants who actually weren't eligible to be in the match. Maybe because they um, had an academic issue and weren't going to graduate this year, or they didn't become eligible for their work visa or whatever, but they stayed on the list and then programs matched them. Well, that's going to screw up those programs um, who can't actually have that resident work for them. And it's going to screw up anybody else who wanted to match in that program and were displaced by an applicant who wasn't actually match eligible. Um, so it's all this kind of data integrity and double checking that takes place um, between the time you submit your rank order list and the time the match results are available. And honestly, I mean, it's, it's tough to wait that out, but that's a good thing. So that's the answer to that question about why it takes so long to get your match results. But, um, you know, like I said, this video is a little bit different um, insofar as I'm answering a question that hasn't yet been asked this year, but, but also because I'm answering a question that's really readily answerable elsewhere. And in general, I try to answer the questions that are of broad interest, um, but are things that require some judgment or some extra information or some integration of information from other sources. The, the things that you couldn't easily Google up. So I want to make sure that I, um, I give you your time's worth of the Sheriff of Sodium today. And so um, for the last half of this video, I'm going to um, to share some stories about why it's so important that the match goes off in a certain way. And um, so we're going to talk about the top five match day mishaps in recent history. And um, let me make a disclaimer first. I get it. Match day and, and all the um, stress and anticipation around it is um, it's a lot. And um, some of these stories, hearing them, it may actually be stressful to certain applicants. So I want to be I want to be honest that you may not want to watch this part of the video if, if you think that that may apply to you. Um, but for the rest of you, I'm going to share these stories um, really as cautionary tales because it's a reminder that wherever you are at in the match process, whether you're an institution, a program director, an applicant, um, it's you know it's an important day for people. It's important that things go a certain way, and and pretty much everybody has a certain obligation to make it go that way. And so you can consider these mishaps cautionary tales. Um, so we're going to begin with number five, and coming in at number five is the 2019 match where a program sent its rank order list to all the applicants that matched there. This happened at the University of Mississippi Medical Center, and basically what went down is this. On match day, the institution's internal medicine program sent a congratulatory email to all the applicants who had successfully matched there. And this email, it, um, it had an attachment, an Excel file, 
And when the newly matched applicants opened it up, they could see that this Excel file was the program's rank order list. And so there, on full display, were the calculations involved and the final rank order list position of all of those individuals. This, this is real bad. I mean, it's a real punch in the gut to find out that you matched to your number one choice and see that you were actually their last choice. You were the last person in, but someone had that experience that day. And it's bad for people who weren't even in the program too, because they're on full display on this rank order list where all the people who the program had ranked and their USMLE scores and COMLEX scores. So lots of other people were impacted at this who didn't even match there. Now the program handled it as well as they can. And what I'm showing you here is a, a letter sent by the program director to all the people who were on the rank order list but didn't match there, letting them know what had happened. And basically they contacted everyone who got this email and, and, and urged them not to share it and apologized for this taking place. But let this be a cautionary tale for anyone who's in possession of the rank order list, that this is an extremely sensitive document. You don't wanna leave it out on your desktop where it can be inadvertently attached to a a congratulatory email or anything similar. And on that note, we're going to turn to number four on our list of match day mishaps when a program failed to submit its rank order list. Sadly, this is a story that's played out at a number of institutions over the years, but the most famous recent example was probably in 2017 when Columbia University New York Presbyterian's cardiothoracic surgery residency program forgot to submit their rank order list. Here's the headline from MedPage today, no heart surgeon match day from major medical center. And of course the program appealed to the NRMP to please let them submit a rank order list late. But uh, you know, like we just talked about, the match is a one shot deal. There ain't no backseats. You miss the rank order deadline and, um, and you're waiting for the soap. But of course, this, this stinks for the applicants who wanted to match there because they, of course, submitted their rank order lists on time. And so maybe they had um, New York Presbyterian number one and matched to a place that, um, that they had number two because of this, this horrible match day mishap. And that brings us to number three, the third greatest match day mishap, match results leaked. The most recent example of a match day leak happened a couple of years ago in the so-called EuroLeak 2020 incident. And this is when urology applicants who logged on to the online system the day before match day were actually able to, um, to view their match day results a day early. But the most famous example of a match day leak happened a few years before. And that was in um, the 2014 NRMP match when a student doctor network user named Invictus posted that uh, by right clicking on the NRMP's website, you could um, look at the page source code and see your match day result. Now, I got to say, I, I almost didn't include this on the list of match day mishaps because part of me wishes that the NRMP would do this every year, that they would, they would create some kind of Da Vinci code and then scatter it throughout their match participation agreement so that people who read that document thoroughly could figure out the secret way to get their match results early. I mean, certainly this is a more fun story than number four and number five on our list. No one got seriously hurt. But even after this incident, there were a lot of upset students who had not been able to see their match results early. And I remember people creating change.org petitions begging the NRMP to release everyone's results early since some people had gotten theirs. So even then, there were some people who were upset. Still, it's a far more innocuous incident than number two on our list, which is the frankly horrifying story of an applicant whose application was fraudulently withdrawn from their top choice program. This all happened in 2016, and, and what went down is this. There was a psychiatry program in Louisiana, and one of the residents in the program told her program director that um, her significant other um, would be a great residency applicant and would be applying. And so they had him come and rotate, and um, he seemed like he'd be a good resident, and so they, they prepared to rank him very highly on their rank order list. And then, a couple of days before the rank order list was due, um, the program director got a message, an email from this, um, this applicant saying, you know, thanks for everything you've done for me, but um, I've decided to withdraw my application um, and instead take an out of the match offer for a program in New York. And so the program director got this and thought, well, I guess maybe things in that relationship didn't go well, or, you know, he got an offer he couldn't refuse or, you know, whatever, and she took him off their rank order list. 
But then match day comes and the program director is talking with her resident and then it comes up about how um, her significant other had, um, had signed on with a program in New York. And the program director sees the color leave her face and she says, he didn't even interview at any programs in New York. And again, the program director is confused and she thinks, well, oh gosh, you know, they're, they're breaking up and, and she doesn't even know that, they're, that they, you know, they're breaking up. But then a few minutes later, the resident comes back and she's got her significant other on the phone and they get to talking and the program director explains, you know, I, I, I don't know how to tell you this, but I withdrew your name from our application list because I got this email that I thought was from you. Of course, by this point, the damage has already been done. The significant other, he matched. He matched not in a psychiatry program, but in a family medicine program, so not in his chosen specialty, and certainly not in a program that was anywhere near his significant other. Um, but at this point, all that was left to do was to try to pick up the pieces. The program director tried to be as helpful as possible, and um, so the applicant um, applied to the NRMP to have a waiver of his match commitment to this family medical program because he was the victim of fraud, and ultimately that was approved. Um, and then they set to work to find out who had done this. So the program director emailed some of the other programs that this um, applicant had applied to and ranked highly, and it turned out that one of them had also received um, an email um, withdrawing him from consideration. So now they got two emails and the police get involved. And they were able to trace the IP address from the first email to a hospital. And the person who was logged on to that computer terminal at the time that the email was sent was a resident at that hospital. And they look at the IP address on the second email and it comes from that same resident's house. It turns out that resident is someone who had known the significant other from the time they were four years old. He was a resident at a different program and, and, and he had actually applied to the programs that he had withdrawn this other person from, potentially because he didn't get accepted there himself or, or who knows what his motive was. In either case, he ultimately pled guilty to a misdemeanor and a felony charge in Texas for committing this fraud. Now, at least this story does have a happy ending. The victimized applicant in this case was able to get the residency training that he ultimately wanted, and he and his program director ultimately wrote this letter to the editor to Academic Medicine saying, we must prevent fraud in the residency recruitment and match process. It's easy to view this match day mishap as a, a horrifying one-off, and, and I think in many ways it is, although I am aware of one other story that's, that, that's similar to this. And so I think there's still a cautionary tale for program directors and program coordinators. If you get emails like this, um, they really probably should come through the ARIS application portal, the secure portal, rather than just from a random email address. And with that, we come to the number one match day mishap of all time, the granddaddy of them all, the urology match in 2005. That year, there were two urology match days. The first one happened on the usual date and programs got their list of new residents and applicants found out whether they'd matched and where and everybody was happy. But um, some of the biggest programs in urology were very confused because they'd gone unfilled. Some of the most prestigious programs had not gotten a single resident and this seemed very strange and when someone looked they realized they had not run the appropriate algorithm. This was the greatest match day mishap that has ever, or, or really could ever occur. And honestly, the only saving grace was the fact that they realized this mistake fairly quickly. You can imagine the turmoil that would have resulted if they'd realized this only some weeks later um, after applicants had been signing leases for and planning moves across the countries to programs that in matter of fact, they had not actually matched at. And with that, we come to the end of this mailbag. I hope I answered the original question and gave you some extra food for thought too. Thanks for listening.